Hello, 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 and welcome to Emotional Response, ER. Just like you need emergency service for your physical elements, you need emergency service for emotional and mental. And this podcast was officially designed specifically, strategically designed to meet those needs. And you can click on any topic at any given time and tune in on information that will help you grow as a person and grow in your relationships. Today is a continuation on the series on self-hatred. I have made it so far a three-part series, mainly because it's multi-layered and self-hatred comes out in so many different ways. And we're living in an environment where people abhor emotions, but they're more emotional than ever before. You raise a young man to not cry. That's the young man that feels like crying all the time. I wish I had time. Let me repeat that again. You raise a young man to not cry. And that will be the young man that wants to cry all the time. So if we're living in a day and a time where people abhor emotions, you supposed to be like still, resilient, concrete, hard up, tough, no punk, no sissy, a person that doesn't back down, We're living in a day and an age where people's sense of entitlement is so high that they can't separate reality from fiction. And so as we dive back into the self-hatred series, this becomes another heavy discussion. Mainly because it's a beautiful monster. It's a beautiful monster. And when we identify it, we can work through it and process it and alleviate it. But if we don't identify with it and work with it and process it and alleviate it, it becomes bigger, bigger, bigger. And that's how people end up suicidal. They end up depressed. They end up doing bodily harm to themselves, bodily harm to other people. Self-hatred comes out in so many different ways. And today I want to talk about self-hatred when it comes to relationships and connecting with others and so as we dive into this topic of relationships and how it relates to self-hatred and relating with others we have to come to the reality that self-hatred is an intense dislike for one's existence one's uniqueness one's present aura it's an intense dislike and for you to get to that point it can be a rippling effect of everything around you everything in your past everything in your future a rippling effect So let's dive into the relationship component when it comes to your past relationships. Self-hatred can begin to form if you're going through any abuse as a child. Physical, 
sexual and mental, excuse me, physical, sexual, mental, emotional, all those different type of abuses can make you retreat within yourself and begin to hate your own existence because at to a certain degree you think it's your fault it's your fault that your mom or dad was verbally abusive to you it's your fault if you were physically abused kicked and punched and banged into a wall it's your fault if you were put down as an idiot dumb Never reaching a mark, inadequate, not perfect. It was your fault if someone was perverting their connection with you and violating you with, through touch and intimate levels of sex. And so, as you go through those experiences, You walk around feeling like, why did I let it happen? And so as you revert back into yourself and start blaming yourself, you start hating your existence. And this can come out in so many different ways. You was abused. And so the self-hatred in your existence and the fact that you went into it may, may make you turn and use your body for money whether it's through prostitution whether it's through stripping you abhor your existence and so you say to yourself I dislike myself to the degree that I will live out my life through my abuse and so because someone perverted their connection with you you relate to the opposite sex or even the same sex with sexual favors and with the intentions to have money And so, it gets real. It gets real. Someone someone might contend and say, no, I don't strip, I don't prostitute, I don't lay down with men to get money because I don't hate myself, because I hate myself. I do it because I got to get away. But. I would declare that when you move through the thought process of randomly exposing your body for financial gain, it's a part of yourself that you don't like because just from the existence of your body being a temple and being valued, You're not going to take gold and throw it in the midst of crap or dung. So why would you throw your body in the midst of men or women that are only going to identify your body for money? Self-love would equate you to only share your body with certain people. That you have gained an emotional interest for. This gets heavy. And instead of you, those that are not not in that lifestyle or not doing it, it makes you look at those that are in that lifestyle and empathize with them instead of look down on them. Because we all have vices. We all have past experiences. We all have different dispositions. And we're crafted in such a way that we're imperfectly whole. Meaning, 
we're all flawed, but we're imperfectly whole. I wish you could grasp that concept. We are born with a whole brain, a whole heart, a spiritual aspect, a whole body. Yet, even through our imperfections, we are whole. We're imperfectly whole. And so when you realize that, no matter what your experience is, you step away and say, hey, I can't let that experience dominate my whole existence on earth. I have to love myself beyond that experience and still value myself. And so to cease physical self-hatred because of sexual abuse, you begin to love yourself a little more than you did yesterday. And can anyone get right at any given time? Yes. Who puts time restrictions on anyone? So what? Someone been a stripper for 10, 20, 30 years. If they turn around tomorrow and say, I want to love their love myself. They have open range to do that. There's no statute of limitation or anything. And if you have a problem with this topic and you're looking down on others that come out of that, you need to reassess your life and see where you are flawed at. And once you look at how flawed you are, you can't look down on others. Everybody has a way of masking the ugly parts of them. And self-hatred is a beautiful monster. So you swinging on a pole or you wearing that Gucci bag or that Supreme bag or you rocking LVs on your feet. You got the latest everything. But you can't even look yourself in the eye. You can't even look yourself in the mirror. Self-hatred. It comes out in many ways. Comes out in many ways. If you've been verbally abused or mentally abused growing up and you think it's your fault, every time you get into a romantic relationship, you walk with a downtrodden spirit if you do something wrong. Oh my gosh. No. You are imperfectly whole. You will make mistakes. Yes. You were called idiot, stupid, dumb. Cry baby. Yes, you were called those things. Continually and ongoing. But do you let that dominate your existence? You heal. You recover from it. You don't let it become the all-encompassing factor to you existing. Bad stuff happens to any everybody in some shape or form. But you grow out of it. And those that find themselves at a dark place... Where they're not growing from it. That's why life coaches and therapists exist. If you have grown up and someone was kicking and punching you in the face after beating your mom up. You think. It's normal to beat yourself up. So you do something wrong. You start kicking and punching yourself. Some people listening to this.